Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about modern portfolio theory and how you can use it to construct a cryptocurrency portfolio. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So I like to do one of these videos about every month or so, because I think they're actually very valuable in helping newcomers identify ways that they can enter into the cryptocurrency market. A lot of people will ask me questions like rate my portfolio or, or you know, they'll want me to at, look at their portfolio and, and sort of give my thoughts on it. And again, at the end of the day, I, I think it's more so important what the data says. And the chart here, I think can be very informative, but it does take a few minutes to actually understand this chart. So unfortunately, if you're looking for a quick answer, this video is not going to provide that for you, but if you're looking for a way to really understand the market and how the market works, and you have some time to kill, maybe grab a drink and we'll, we'll systematically dive in. So we're, trying to, we're gonna try to go through this step by step so that everyone fully understands why I say things like Bitcoin is the majority of my portfolio and you know, weighting it by having more Bitcoin and Ethereum over a lot of other altcoins, in my opinion, is better, though I do like having altcoins in my portfolio. So I hope that this video will help identify the reasons for that, because I know it can be somewhat confusing for newcomers. And one of the reasons it can be consuming, or one of the reasons it can be confusing for newcomers is a lot of times it takes significant Bitcoin volatility to attract newcomers to the space. And then by the time they're attracted to the space, they might buy Bitcoin and then they get they get sidetracked by all these other altcoins that are going crazy. And then they say, well, why the hell should I own Bitcoin when I can just throw my money at these altcoins being shilled by some other person and I'm going to see, you know, a 10x gain in a week? What's the point of holding Bitcoin or Ethereum in that scenario? And then you see the same cycle sort of repeat over and over and over. So this video, we're going to go through systematically how you can construct a portfolio using modern portfolio theory, more specifically the Sharpe ratio. Not to be confused with the Sortino ratio, which maybe we'll do a video on in the future. The Sharpe ratio basically just is your, it's your risk adjusted returns, okay? Your risk adjusted returns, and ultimately that is what we're important, that's, what, that's what's more important I think, is yes, we expect altcoins to yield higher returns, but if you always go all in on altcoins, then whenever there's a pullback, your portfolio will bleed a lot more. And so by having, say, Bitcoin, it can help protect you against some of the potential downside. So what is this chart? This chart shows the expected return versus volatility. And the expected return on this chart is our historical returns. Okay, it's our annualized historical returns for these cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Monero, Dash, and XRP. And you might say, well, it's very unlike Ben to talk about a lot of these coins. But again, the reason I'm using those coins as an example is to show why some of them are typically not worth holding, even though they might have potential upside, it's the opportunity cost is too high to merit owning them based on historical data. Now, a lot of this stuff is used in traditional finance. However, oftentimes they would be using projected returns for their expected return rather than historical returns. And it's the projected returns that is often the secret sauce of hedge funds and why people pay them money to help construct their portfolios because supposedly they know or they're, they're projecting out what they think will happen. And based on those projections and its volatility, they can come up with a portfolio that maximizes the Sharpe ratio on the efficient frontier. So what is this chart? It's the expected return versus volatility. This is the expected annual return. 1.0 means 100% return. 100% annual return may seem crazy, but when you consider the fact that Bitcoin hit $3,800 just over a year ago, and today it's trading at around $57,000, $58,000, is it really that hard to imagine that the annualized volatility could be somewhere around 100%? I don't think it is at all. Of course, there's going to be some years where there's going to be 80% losses like there have been. But over the time, over time, a lot of these portfolios do stand the test of time. Okay. So what are you looking at? Well, on this chart, you're looking at exactly 100,000 simulations, Monte Carlo brute force approach to find the portfolio that maximizes the Sharpe ratio. Okay, that's what you're looking at. 
And what you see up here, this is the efficient frontier. So ideally, if you had a portfolio consisting of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, XMR, Dash, and XRP, you would want that portfolio to identically exist on the efficient frontier. Why is that the case? That's the case because on this efficient frontier, you're getting the highest expected return for a given volatility or risk level. So in this case, volatility equals risk. The higher the volatility, the more risk. So if you're okay with say 80% annualized volatility, then you wanna get the highest expected return for that. And so there's a lot of portfolios on this line that would give you an annual volatility of approximately 80%. However, you want the one that would be at the top here on the efficient frontier, because that would give you the highest expected return for that portfolio. If you're on this curve down here, you might consider that to be the inefficient frontier because you're literally taking a portfolio that has the same volatility as one way up here based on historical data, yet your expected return might only be 65% as opposed to over here at 105%. So the portfolio construction does matter. Now again, I will remind you, we're looking at historical returns, not projected returns. So there is going to be some nuances there on how important you know any of this stuff is, how, how important do you think expected returns are? And if you wait, if you wait a lot of your um, your decisions on historical returns, then maybe this will be more important for you. If you don't, then maybe it won't be that important for you. If you're wondering why not, why I don't include other coins like the ones I mainly cover on the channel, besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are Link, Ada, and Dot, again, the reason is because there's just simply not enough data. Because you can only use data, you you have to use uh, similar link time series. So if we were to include coins like Chainlink and Cardano we would only be able to include Bitcoin and Ethereum data from 2017 because they need to be the same uh, length time series, okay? And, and then you just start to get results that really don't mean anything because some coins haven't experienced a full market cycle yet. And so the, the results there can change very easily based on what phase you are during the cycle. If you construct, if you go with coins that have been around for a few years, then they've lived through the entire market cycle and the portfolio weights, whether you run this today or six weeks from now, they're not gonna really change a whole lot. They can subtly shift with time, but they're not gonna change a whole lot. So this is the efficient frontier. And this yellow dot you see right here is your, your, your maximum sharp ratio, okay? And we're using, again, we're using a Monte Carlo brute force approach. Remember, this is your sharp ratio. It's your, um, uh, your, your returns, okay, minus your risk-free rate, okay, minus the risk-free rate. So like the treasury yields divided by the, um, the standard deviation um, of the excess returns. So the reason, the reason why, why this is important is because when, you, when you're looking at your, your, your sharp ratio, you would like it to be the highest it can be. Right, because for every unit of risk or volatility that you're taking on, you're getting the highest expected return. Now, what does it mean to have a return of 100%? Does that mean you're automatically gonna see a return of 100% for this portfolio? No, it doesn't. What this means is to within one standard deviation, this portfolio right here would give you a return of 100% plus or minus the volatility of 75%. So within one standard deviation, that's a probability of 68%. So there's a 68% probability that this portfolio would give you a return of 100% plus or minus 75%. So that would be between 25% up to 175%. So between, there's a 68% chance that the portfolio corresponding to this dot would return you 25% up to 175%. Yes, that's a big range. Yes, the ranges for stocks and precious metals would be a lot lower, but this is crypto and this is why we're here, okay? We also know that we could go out of that 68% probability of, of having that return. We could have negative, right? It could, it could be, we could have losses or we could exceed those returns. So again, it's only a probability and it just shows you the likelihood of, of getting a return within that range. Now, so far, all we're looking at are just dots on a chart. And this was a Monte Carlo brute force method basically to identify the maximum sharp ratio. However, with a little bit of quadratic programming, you can actually solve for it because if you're doing it brute force, you might always wonder, well, what if I ran another 10X simulations? Maybe I would find a slightly different portfolio that would be slightly better, but you can solve for it using quadratic programming and then you're not left wondering if the brute force method had gone long enough.
So then, what are the portfolios that maximize your risk-adjusted returns? And by the way, I've shown this table on this on the channel before a few weeks ago, but I just want to do this video again and go e e go into as much detail as I can because there's enough. There's so many people coming into the space. I've gotten a hundred thousand, one hundred twenty thousand new subscribers in the last four weeks, and I just feel like there's a lot of people. They have some money. They're really not sure what to do. Based, and this is not financial advice, of course, but based on historical returns, using as that as our expected return, the the portfolio that maximizes the sharp ratio out of these six coins would actually be about fifty-two percent Bitcoin and thirty percent Ethereum. That means that eighty-two percent of your portfolio would be in either Bitcoin and Ethereum, and that would and then it would only leave you room for another eighteen um, percent. The other coins for say XRP would be 0.7%, Litecoin 0.8%. So my contention for both XRP and Litecoin, again, is that they can trend up with the market, right? They can trend up with the market. And a lot of times I would expect them to trend up with the market. However, a dollar into either of these coins is opportunity cost. And what this says is that, yeah, like it can go up. The We know that the valuations of these cryptocurrencies can go up in a bull market. However, is it worth the downside risk? And when they're, when they're coming in less than 1%, you have to even wonder if it's worth your time, right? You have to wonder if it's worth your time uh, dealing with, say, 0.7%, 0.8% valuations. Now, the fact that they're not zero right now does represent the fact that there are situations where maybe having a small amount of them is worth it for that potential upside. And certainly in bear markets, I would completely steer away from these coins. Um, and, and with the SEC news on XRP, I mean, I'm not even touching it right now. Uh, but with other coins like Litecoin, you know, you could argue that there are certain phases of the cycle where they where it does tend to do well, and we know that the valuations can go up against Bitcoin and Ethereum. However, those areas are few and far between, and you have to wonder if you're just holding Litecoin for say eight years, it's really not worth the downside risk. If you want to get cute and try to time the market, then there are phases where paying, you know, buying Litecoin may pay off because we've seen it pump up against Bitcoin. And based on the current Litecoin Bitcoin valuation downtrend, right, it is trending down over the macro scale, it could still pump up up 200% against Bitcoin uh, in this bull market and still be respecting the macro downtrend line of the Litecoin Bitcoin valuation. So this shows you that some coins are just simply not really worth holding a lot of. Uh, it doesn't mean they can't go up. And a lot of times I would expect them to go up. But Every dollar in one of these coins is a dollar you're not putting elsewhere. And the, the downside risk on these coins is a lot higher than the downside risk on Bitcoin and Ethereum. So what if, though, you're not interested in maximizing the Sharpe ratio? Because what if you want more risk? You want to take on more risk. Therefore, you want more volatility than, say, 65 or 67 percent. You want to say, you know what? I want a higher expected return than 95 percent. I'm going to go for a 105 105% expected return or a 110% expected return. Well, to do that, you have to come up this curve, meaning you're going to be taking on more volatility, more units of risk. So, for instance, if you wanted a portfolio with 75% volatility, the portfolio that would maximize your sharp ratio on the efficient frontier would only be 28% Bitcoin and 42 or 41% Ethereum. Now, the reason why there's so much Ethereum is because Ethereum has been known to outperform Bitcoin at key phases during the market cycle. Over the last couple months, Ethereum has been bleeding against Bitcoin. But if you look at what it's done over the last year and a half, it's actually been gaining against Bitcoin. We go through these sub-cycles within the market cycle where people are depressed over Ethereum and then people are exhilarated over Ethereum. And we just sort of keep rinsing and repeating. So a portfolio that would, say, maximize your sharp ratio at say 75% volatility would actually call for having more Ethereum than having Bitcoin. Okay, and this again is based on historical returns. And you can also see Monero is coming in at a very high percentage. Um, this is because Monero had a really great run during the last market cycle. And so it is taking that into account. Now, if you continue along, you'll notice that as you expect, as you go up this curve and you get more units of volatility, then you're going to be getting less and less Bitcoin because Bitcoin is a protection against volatility. While Bitcoin may seem volatile, it's not nearly as volatile as some of these other cryptocurrencies. And yes, they can be volatile to the upside, but they can also be volatile to the downside. And so for say volatility of 90%, where you're going after an expected return of 110% plus or minus 
which could yield you a 200% return within one standard deviation, then you would be looking at a modest 5% Bitcoin and 74% Ethereum. I would not personally suggest that, right? I'm not, a, I'm not going to offer any financial advice, but this is a very risky play. I prefer having a majority of my portfolio in Bitcoin. Now, there are going to be some times during the market cycle where you might flip it and it might not be the majority in Bitcoin, but a lot of times those phases are when altcoins are going crazy and it might only last a few weeks, okay? So that's where we currently are in this discussion is the idea of looking at volatility realizing that the portfolio that maximizes your sharp ratio is actually still a majority Bitcoin, even with six coins. If you're curious what this would give you if it were only Bitcoin and Ethereum, right now it would be 76% Bitcoin, 24% Ethereum. The reason, Bitcoin is more stable, it would protect you against the downside risk, and it still tends to trend up fairly, fairly nicely in a bull market, but by retaining 24% of Ethereum, basically one fourth of your portfolio in Ethereum, you maintain the potential higher upside with Ethereum, but then you protect yourself with all the Bitcoin in case there is a correction. That way your Bitcoin valuation of your portfolio isn't going to zero basically, or to you know much lower than you would like because a significant, of your, a significant por percentage of your portfolio is already in Bitcoin. So hopefully that makes sense. This is why I tell people that are new to the space, while it can be, interesting to chase shiny objects and chase the the latest and greatest altcoin that's pumping the best thing that i would imagine uh, for new people is just to get positions in bitcoin and ethereum and then from there so bitcoin first then ethereum then from there you can expand out to other cryptocurrencies now i would i, I personally after bitcoin and ethereum would go for link ada and dot over these four coins i'm just using these four coins as an illustration for this specific example, okay? So hopefully this makes sense, okay? Hopefully this video is informative. Um, you know, I, I think it will be. I think, you know, when you look at the sharp ratio, uh, you'll you'll come to understand it a little bit more. Remember, this is the risk-free rate. So you're, you're basically subtracting off what you might get with like, say, treasury yields, okay? So the returns minus the risk-free rate and I think this is what a lot of people forget to forget to add in there is, is the risk free rate um, and then divided by the standard deviation. Hopefully this makes sense. If you guys like the content, you guys like this discussion, I'll probably try to do one of these videos every month or so just so new people are getting updated on how to construct the portfolio. And uh, of course, you can always do this stuff yourself. I did this in, in Python. It, it actually isn't that complicated if you just sit down for, for a few hours and, and work through it. Um, so I'd recommend if you if you do have a programming background and you are interested in cryptocurrency, maybe just sit down for a while uh, and, and, and look into your favorite cryptocurrencies and realize how the younger the cryptocurrency is, the, the less useful um, this type of, of exercise will be just because there's not going to be enough data. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy the content. If you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's go for 280,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. And remember, we have the premium list altcoin season sale ending. Uh, the last day for it will be March 31st. You'll get access to the weekly reports and videos, the Telegram alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard, the premium only live streams, the Into the Cryptoverse app, and more. We have more stuff coming in quarter two. You can lock in the lower rate. You have two more days. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on alerts so you get notified of future videos. Give the video a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye.